Okay, so living in life as a tourist is a wonderful thing. Why? Because it is all about exploration and adventure. However, there's one component also that is beautiful about tourism, and that is new discovery. Boy, and did we discover something here in Mombasa? We want to tell you all about it. But first, if it's your first time, please don't forget to subscribe. If you like what you're hearing, please like, share, and comment. Blessings, we are the Muhammads, the residential tourists. 85 to Africa, we are living in the after, and today, at this very moment, we are at Cafe Artland right here in Mabasa. It's a beautiful, beautiful, quaint cafe. Being a tourist is, is a wonderful thing. I mean, being a tourist is about exploration, adventure, and not to mention new discovery. So there are many different tourist attractions now. You know, we in Mombasa, so you got sea, sun, and sand. Or if you're in Nairobi, in Nairobi you got, you know, wonderful safaris with different, you know, animals and so forth and so on. So, you know, we expect to see those particular things, but we did not expect <laughs> to see what we're about to share with you this moment, this time, this day, all right? Let's get into it. We just have a question. Does Africa have jungle fever? Does Africa have jungle fever? White men say to his woman, baby, you are the flower of white southern womanhood. Too holy and pure to be touched by any man including me, I'm going to put you up on a pedestal so the whole world fall down and worship you. And if any nigger so much as look at you, I'll lynch his ass. She believed him, thought she really was holy and pure like the Virgin Mary. She let him put her up on that pedestal. Meanwhile, the husband, no sooner than the sun went down, down to the slave quarters, grabbing up every piece of black poon tang he could lay his hands on, and running to the gin mill to brag about it. And that's how our blood got diluted in the lattos, quadrooms, octoroons. And I'm sure that most of those high and mighty white ladies felt abandoned, but they were so proud to be white and therefore superior. They kept their mouths shut and their legs locked tight. But in the midnight hour, laying there, alone, on the hot bed of lust, I'm sure they must have thought what it would be like to have one of them big black bucks the husbands were so desperately afraid of. I'm not gonna just say Zanzibar, Kenya, Taiwan, Mali, and uh, each country is at a different level. But here, here, mind blown, mind blown. So we had to take some time and just do some research. So check, so but so check this out. So here's the thing, right? It's not like we were looking for this stuff. Right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, as we mentioned before, you know, we were very much excited and thrilled at the fact that they had like malls, you know, very familiar and, and similar to what we are accustomed to back in the States, right? Even right here in Mombasa, which is actually where we started when we came to Kenya. 
what we begin to see, you know, like, like everywhere, <laughs> seemingly in this particular mall, right? A particular relationship dynamic, I'll put it that way. Right? Yeah, because it, it was, this is the reason why it was alarming. Now, we're always on guard, especially when it comes to our sisters. And we're like, what is, why do we keep seeing Santa Claus? Okay, Santa Claus. With these young, young women. Beautiful, right? Beautiful. But y'all see? Beautiful Kenyan women. Beautiful Kenyan women. Young. 20, in their 20s somewhere. Definitely in their 20s. Either be, me, gotta, I don't want to say teenagers, but. No, no, not teenagers. The, not teenagers. Somewhere in their 20s. Right. Yeah, Beautiful models walking around. Right. With Santa Claus. A lot of old. Not, and this is no exaggeration, a lot of old Caucasian men. So, I mean, you see, initially you see one here, one there, but In then, Banda, you'll see one here and one there. No, I'm saying when we first got here, because mm -hmm. we didn't know, and we just, but it was like a norm, right? Because, I mean, it's just everywhere you look, everywhere you turn, this is what you saw. Now, I guess it wouldn't have stood out as much if it were, you know, you know, two individuals who maybe in close in age range, but it was clearly every, time. every single time these were older Caucasian men with these young, beautiful Kenyan women. So we were trying to understand what's going on. What's the deal? Now listen. And, and when we say older, we're talking about the grandparents. Age. No, real talk, man. Yeah, they, they 60 and up. Really? Canes. Really? Um, and the, the weird thing is, and what was starting to cause the alarm is, the girls never looked happy. They looked a little, you know, like, yeah, not happy. Not happy. Like, <laughs> they'll either walk ahead or walk behind. Uh, very rare you see them holding hands, but you could tell they're together. Um, now, Santa Claus looks very happy. Except calling Santa Claus. <laughs> offend some fool. We're not trying to offend Ooh. nobody. <laughs> Y'all look like Santa Claus. Listen, this is just White an... White beards, old, some with the big pop bellies. But listen, um, this is... It's big op pockets. <laughs> observation. This is observation. These are things that we have... Uh, we just not on the search for, just through our observation and exploring and, and our adventure... You know, this is part of the discovery that we discovered. You know, and so this is what it is. And as we were beginning to say, like, okay, what is it? Why is it that I don't know pattern? I guess you can see why is it that specifically? There's no, there's not much of a variety. It's just that older to younger. So the male to the female. You like so when we were in Rhonda, we would see the see it, but they were always around the same age. Right. It was you know just yeah. a, I mean casual, common, you so know, whatever. You wouldn't look at it anything different except for why. Tanzania, it was you'll see the older women with the younger men. Right here. <laughs> it's, it is mind blowing and it's in abundance. It's not like once a day or a little it's it's so we can be in the mall, at the cafe over in the mall, and every other table will be this dynamic. It's true. It's very true. Very true. And so we, we actually, um, when we first came, we were talking with a nail tech and asking her questions. Like, because we discovered it then, we've seen it then, and it was like, why is we don't expect to see that when we come here? So we're asking, why? Why is that? And um. They started laughing, and it was like, well, it's a seasonal thing. It's business transaction. That's interesting, it's a seasonal thing. Mm -hmm. She was having a conversation. Yeah. I was out there. I needed to know. She was getting her nails done, but I needed she got to the know. 411. And what, they, what she said was, during the seasons that the men are here for business or conferences, or they come here every year for check on their properties, they don't bring their wives and come by themselves. And they have a particular local that they deal with, 
and they don't give them money. Mm -hmm. They take care of all their expenses though. Mm -hmm. So when they come, and as we were talking, one came in there, a couple came in there, and she said, watch, he'll pay. He doesn't give her money. And it, I didn't I don't remember if I watched or not, but out because I was too busy taking notes. And um, <laughs> she's she trying to get her sugar daddy. <laughs> no, sir. not Santa Claus. I don't do that one. Um, but I was taking notes. I'm always taking notes when we're doing our little research because we've been wanting to do this for a few months. And so she said, they don't give them the money. They, but while they're here, they take care of all their expenses. They get their hair done. They take them out, fine dining, and they pay their rent up for the year. So when they come back, they know who to call again. And she said, if you look at them, they don't really look happy and they don't bring them to the homes in the village. They don't let them come to see what they're doing. And it's a win-win. And I'm like, what? And I couldn't believe it. Because the dynamic, the whole situation, it just doesn't seem like it's something morally that somebody would want to do. But we understand when you, when you financially, it happens. And then they were telling us also that some of them have babies for these individuals. Mm. They use the babies for leverage. Mm. So they can get more oh financial gain. Yeah, they get more. I'm going to call Brit London and tell your wife I have two of your husband's babies. So you gonna, you got to come out your pocket. You're going to come out the gonna, pocket. I'm going to wreck up your whole family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it's mind blowing. We never understood. We still don't understand. So, so we're asking questions. Why is this allowed? Why do you guys do that? What is going on with this here? And why is it in abundance here in Kenya? So here's the thing, right? So, I mean, we didn't lose sleep over this, okay? We didn't lose any sleep, but it was just a stare in the face. And so she did. <laughs> it was there, you know? And so I guess for the most part, it's more of like a, like a business transaction. So it just so happened, right? Fast forward, just so happened as we were returning back from our travel from Nairobi back to Mombasa. On the train, you know, we were able to in, in, engage in a very, very wonderful conversation with two locals, right? Beautiful individuals, right? And we're talking about many different things. And somehow, I don't I don't even remember, maybe you you probably asked the question. She probably asked a direct question, like directly, like, what's up with this, right? So they use the term, right? They use the term, and that term is beach boys, okay? So we think beach boys, we think of one of two things. We're thinking either, either the rock band back in the 60s, <laughs> or... Grandpa's thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> or, or beach boy, like a lifeguard or something like that, someone who works the beach for the safety so on, so right? Here's a little different. Now, there are those there that are here, but... This was specific to a type of individuals. These boys are labeled that because much like, as you were seeing a quote unquote business transaction, if you will, with the young local females and the older white men, it seems the foundation, the root of it began with these individuals, but on the flip side. Our highly trained analysts here at Vocative ignore nothing. Not even these intriguing vacation photos posted by some German women traveling to Africa. The pics raised questions. The answers turned out to be pretty black and white. These women are thousands of miles from home, looking to get laid. And if they're lucky, maybe even love. Sating the desires of white women is a business here. And as with any business, there is competition. Local gangs of rusters, also called beach boys, used to just sell beads and boat rides. Now they're offering rides on their beach-toned bodies as well. This is our office where we get daily bread. The business have gone down for Morant due to stiff competition with the rusters. To gain an advantage seducing their clients, the rusters use voodoo magic to attract white women. We go to the witch doctor to practice voodoo so that if you come around the beach, 
she she's really crying she was looking for you the whole day so that she want only to to stay with you so that you can make love with her you can get a lot of money beach boys is in a new term it's a new term to us but no, it's not a new term but, but i'm just saying it's a new term to us but i'm, I'm explaining to explaining that you know how but, but we're finding out that that's what's been going on on the coastal countries here in africa Gambia had a major, major situation with Beach Boys. But we in Mombasa. Tanzania had a situation. We now in Mombasa, right we're in learning Mombasa. that they had a situation because now it's kind of hush hush. Uh, it's, 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 so it's still there. It's yeah. just not as prevalent. And it got to a point where it was, you know, uh, it was it was widespread. And the understanding is that, you know, uh, tourism took a hit here once upon a time. And so, in order for the country to increase, you know, the, 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 the tourism or the attracting people to come back to Kenya for, you know, tourism, they had to, you know, work out some things, right? So one of those things is that a lot of these uh, different resorts, they would do this all-inclusive packaging and so forth and so on, and these people would buy into it, which didn't, you know, they didn't need to go outside of the resort. So businesses, people with businesses were suffering, locals, right? So they brought business to the beach, right? And so they come to find out that, you know, a lot of these, again, older Caucasian women. Women who, this time. Women. Not this time. This is, this is the... You know what I'm saying? When they're dealing with the beach boys. Right. Talk about old... Older. Uh, what's Santa Claus' wife name? <laughs> Mrs. Claus. Mrs. Claus is coming. <laughs> so these these individuals were seeking. They were seeking, and it, initially they were seeking of two different particular tribes. One of those tribes being the Nasai tribe. That's how it kind of kicked off because these, these this tribe and it's another tribe. I, I can't remember the exact name of it. You know, they're kind of known for their sexual prowess. Right? So these women was out to get it. They was trying to get the groove back like Stella. So <laughs> But keep in mind Maasai tribes is, is a lot of the tour they bring a lot of tourism to the tribe. Right. So they, so come, they use that to they their advantage. To, you know, to their advantage. But they were being sought out. Eighty-six, I believe there was a movie that was done. Um, I forget the title of it. I think it has something about the white mass. I'm not quite sure. I can try to Google it, maybe find out. And it was about just this here that we're talking about, but it was more put in a more romantic format. But anyway, a lot of these individuals, you know, both on the male and the female side of, of these Caucasians, are typically from Germany or, or Swiss or something like that. This is the research that we have. Done we had done and we've been doing. And so, um, so yeah, that's what it was. So they had to step their game up. They had to come to the tent. They would, they, would, they, would, they would settle on the beach. You know, they would entertain to make themselves more attractive. And it became, became one of those things that you had some of these beach boys who I mean, they had, they had like 10 at a time getting money uh, uh, sent to them, you know, vehicles and cars, whatever. When you say 10 at a time, you mean 10 older Mrs. Clauses. <laughs> 
he had a whole tribe of them, and they didn't know. So they were they were playing the Mr. Claus. So he might have one in UK, one in uh, America, London, Germany, Germany, whatever. Or they might all be from the same place. It don't matter. They didn't tell us about Africa, and we're finding out that a lot, even the Caucasian Americans, they weren't focused on Africa either. So everything that we're talking about is more of the Europe. Yeah. European countries. Primarily, primarily, yeah. primarily. For now, I'm sure America's coming after this, but for now. <laughs> so, I mean, so this is, so we, we, we present this because again, we're residential tours. We live here, right? But of course, you know, uh, these are, you know, some of the things as a tourist, you may not necessarily pick up on. But if you live here, you're trying to get acclimated and you see these things, man. You see these things. And it's shocking. And it becomes, it's, it's, it's a bit shocking. You it's don't come shocking. to the motherland to kind of free yourself from seeing certain things and dealing with certain people. And then you come here and it's even more abundant than that home that you left. It's like, what the what? Wait a minute. <laughs> I definitely didn't expect to see this. So that, so that leads us, that draws us to you know, to, I guess, our, our main point, right? Right, because obviously, you know, these individuals who are setting themselves up to be able to be in a position to have this type of uh, relationship, this dynamic of relationship, which is really more business oriented, you know, they, they look at them as the cash cow you know they're like okay all right of course i mean i mean it may be you know here and there there may be a sincere attraction i can't speak on it i don't know no, but when you but when you look at it i mean when you look at it you see that there is not based on any type of attraction physically it's definitely about that mighty dollar or shilling or whatever, euro, or whatever it is, right? And so for us, it's like, you know, as my wife was saying, it's like the, that part of like certain things you're thinking you're getting away from is still present. Meaning, you know, success, the standards of beauty, the, the higher standards are always still equated with the Caucasian. Right, to think that that is, you know, where you're going to get your greatest of opportunity from, and it's here, it's it's it's, it's here on the continent, and so, you know, it leaves us in question. It does leave us in question, and um, it's much much more we can go into about about this, but it's here. It, it is what it is. So, if or when you do come, not even as my wife was saying, not even here in Mombasa, you know, even in Gambia even in Tanzania and in the other parts, especially the coastal parts where most times people, well, most places where people go when they come to Africa want to uh, enjoy themselves, right? There's a lot of different resorts, the beaches, the whole none. You'll see they're pretty prevalent in those particular areas. And we don't know that anyone is, is I don't want to say addressing it, but speaking on it or making mention of it. We just had to. We just had to make mention of it. I know what's going to happen. The yeah, comments are going to hit us hard. They're going to be mad. But it's okay. We, we've been told <laughs> Africa don't see color and, and you know, and I'm like, okay, I understand all it's of that. Okay. But, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Do we, we see age? I mean, do come on. Old Listen. Are you really attracted to your mom's mom <laughs> and your dad's dad? Or better yet, colonizers, grandpa, I mean, how... I'm confused. I'm confused. And, you know, I'm, I'm more of that, um, that, that person. My husband's more like that. But I, I'm for real. I, I'm I mean, I'm, that. listen, look, I mean, I'm, I have my position, right? My position is my position, right? I got a beautiful black queen here. You know what I mean? So that speaks for itself. I'm all for the black queen, for sure. All for the black queen. All day, every day, to the day I die. You understand? But we know things are what they are. We see things, you know, we see it and it is what it is. And we can only present it. We can only share with you of our observation, what we witness, 
and what we experience because the shock of the hour, you don't want it. You may not be ready for it. So if you do come to the bus, if you do come to the, go to the Gambia, wherever you may go, so and so, and you see it, then you be like, okay, all right, I already know. It is, it, it is what it is. And you probably already know what I'm saying. they told us. RT told us. So, we wanted to share that with you guys and hopefully it was really informative. Um, but also, we want to thank you guys so much for those that have joined the membership program. Uh, we're just waiting for a few more people to join. Um, but you guys have really reached out and responded for the membership program and for the merch line. We've been seeing some, some things moving on our merch line. Give us any suggestions. Maybe you want to see something different or maybe you want